Welcome to homecampus.com.sg. In the previous lesson, we saw what a fraction is. In this lesson, what we're going to do is talk about the three different kinds of fractions. Okay, so the first kind of fraction is called a proper fraction. Proper fraction. Okay, the second kind, the second kind is called an improper fraction. Second kind is an improper fraction. And the third kind is called a mixed number or a mixed fraction. Okay, some books use uh, the name mixed numbers and others use mixed fraction, but they're one and the same. Okay, so mixed number or mixed fraction. That's the third kind. Okay, so the first kind, let's talk about the first kind now, which is the proper fraction. So a proper fraction is like, you know, it's an, it's a regular, it's your common fraction, very ordinary fraction. There's nothing fancy about proper fra fractions. So in a proper fraction, what is there is that the numerator, which is the top number of the fraction, is smaller than the denominator. So we know that every fraction has got two numbers, right? Every fraction has got two numbers. There's a number at the top, which is called the numerator, and there's a number at the bottom that's called the denominator. So in a proper fraction, the numerator or the top number is smaller than the denominator. For example, say 3 upon 5 or 4 upon 5 or 12 upon 17. Okay, These are all examples of proper fractions. So a proper fraction is a fraction that has its numerator that's smaller than the denominator. Okay, In each of these examples, as you can see, the numerator, the top number, is smaller than the bottom number. And hence, these are all proper fractions. So if I were to represent the uh, this on a on a pizza, how would I do that? Okay, so say for example, let's take one of these, say let's take uh, 4 upon 5 and we'll put that on a pizza. So we take a pizza, this is your nice round pizza and we put 4.5 or we mark 4.5 on this pizza okay so say 4.5 is the fraction of the pizza that Annie got okay so then how much did she get well what we do is we slice up this pizza into five pieces five pieces because the denominator is five okay so these are five equal pieces or five equal slices of the pizza and if we are to mark four upon five or any share on this pizza which is four upon five this actually means four out of five slices right four upon five means four out of five slices so it's very intuitive what this means it simply means four out of five so what we do is we mark four slices out of five and that gives you the fraction four upon five so this is equal to this whole thing that's marked in uh, red or pink is equal to four upon five and that's your proper fraction okay all right so now let's talk about let's move on to improper fraction improper fraction as the name suggests is improper well, impro it's improper, but it doesn't mean that there's something wrong or something bad about improper fractions. They're not bad or they're not wrong or anything. They're just improper. And the reason why they're called improper is because they are the complete opposite of proper fractions. So in a proper fraction, we said just now that the numerator is smaller than the denominator. So then if the improper fraction is the complete opposite of a proper fraction, then obviously the improper fraction should have its numerator greater than or equal to the denominator. So if we take these three examples that I wrote down here in uh, the proper fraction column and I invert these, I just flip or switch the numerators with the denominators, then what I'll get is improper fractions, okay? So take, for example, 3 upon 5. What I do is I switch the numerator and the denominator. So the numerator becomes 5, and the denominator becomes 3, then here is your improper fraction because the numerator is bigger than the denominator. Okay, next 4 upon 5. Let's take the example 4 upon 5 from proper fraction and flip its uh, numerator and denominator. And what do we get? We get 5 upon 4. So that's another improper fraction. Similarly, 17 upon 12 is another improper fraction. We said the improper fraction could also have its numerator equal to its denominator. So then, for example, 4 upon 4 is also an improper fraction and so on and so forth, okay? So now, if I were to represent one of these on a pizza, how would I do that, okay? Let's take, for example, say 5 upon 4. Let's put 5 upon 4 on a pizza. 
So what we do is we take 5 upon 4, this is your 5 upon 4, okay, and we make a pizza. Now how many slices should we cut this into? Well, the denominator says 4, so then obviously we need to cut it into 4 slices, right? So 4 slices. Now how much is your share? Well, your share is 5 upon 4, so which means 5 out of 4. 5 upon 4 simply means 5 out of four slices. Now, is it possible to get five out of four slices? No, of course not. So then what should we do? Well, the answer to that is, I'm sure you've guessed it by now, is that you take one more pizza. So that's what you do. You take one more pizza because the first pizza has got only four slices and you can't get five out of four slices. So what you need to do is you take another pizza and then similarly, you cut this up also into four slices because the denominator is still four, right? Now let's count five slices. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. So there you go. So you have now five slices. So your fraction or your improper fraction, which is five upon four, is represented by all these colored slices. So all these colored slices together make five upon four. So that's your improper fraction. Now, another thing to note about this is that this first pizza, this first pizza here is represented by the fraction 4 upon 4 because your share is 4 out of a total of 4 slices. So this is 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. The numerator is 4 and there's a total of 4 slices. So 4 upon 4. And the colored slice in the second pizza represents a fraction of 1 upon 4. So together 4 upon 4 plus 1 upon 4 is equal to 5 upon 4. We'll talk more about additions and subtractions of fractions and stuff later on in another lesson but for now it's uh, always good to know how to get improper fractions like that. You can draw it on the pizza but how does that work is how it works. This is how it works, okay? Alright, so that's that about improper fractions. Now let's, uh, let's move on to the third kind which is the mixed fraction or mixed number. Okay, now as the name suggests, mixed, a mixed number is made up of two things, okay? It's made up of a whole number and a fraction. So what a mixed number looks like is something like this. One and two-third, one and a quarter, one and five upon twelve, or two and a half, and so on and so forth. So this is how a mixed number looks like. So what you can see from here, what you can observe, which is quite obvious from here, is that a mixed number is made of two things. The first thing is the whole number, and the second thing is the fraction. So a mixed number is made of two parts. The first part is the whole number part and the second part is the fractional part. Okay, the pro and the fractional part is a proper fraction. You should keep that in mind that it's, a, it's always a proper fraction which means the numerator is smaller than the denominator. Okay, so all these numbers in the mixed number case are made up of a whole number part and a fractional part. So that's what mixed numbers are. Now, but what does this mean? What does uh, one and two third mean? Or what does one and quarter mean? Well, if you s just tr just uh, think about the way you say it. You take for example, one and one upon four. Let's write that down. How does that work? That works as one and one upon four. When you say one and one upon four, this is how you write that down. One and one upon four. So now think about it. What is one and one upon four? If you say am, then all that it must mean is plus, that it's a sum. So it really is a sum of the whole number and the fractional part. So this is one plus one upon four. So in the case of pizza, what this means is that this is one whole pizza plus one fourth of the next pizza. Okay, so let's draw this. Let's draw a pizza. So this is your one whole pizza, which is represented by the whole number, okay, which is represented by this guy here, this one here. So this is your one whole pizza, and we paint it. And now let's write down the fractional part, okay. The fractional part is 1 upon 4, so let's make it on the pizza. So the fractional part on the pizza is... One slice out of four slices, right, because the denominator says... 4, so obviously then this must be cut into 4 slices, okay? And then your share is 1 upon 4, so that means you get only 1 slice out of 4 slices. So then this is 1 slice out of 4 slices. So together they equal to 1 plus 
1 upon 4 and that's equal to 1 and a quarter. So this is how, uh, this is the format in which you write the mixed number 1 and a quarter. But it actually means 1 plus 1 quarter, okay? So that's that about mixed numbers. Now if you see, if you look uh, in the second column, if you compare the second column and the third column, what I have in the second column is an improper fraction, which is 5 upon 4. And that's also represented by one whole pizza and one out of four slices of the second pizza. Same as the third column, the mixed number, which is one whole pizza and one out of the four slices of the second pizza. So that should mean that 5 upon 4 is actually equal to 1 and 1 quarter. So there you go. Improper fractions can be converted to mixed numbers and mixed numbers can also be converted back to improper fractions. You'll see that in the next lesson how to convert them back and forth. But for now, you should know that mixed numbers and uh, improper fractions have the same value. You know, if you convert them, then you know that they have the same value. The value of uh, the thing remains the same, whether you write it in the mixed number format or the improper fraction format, okay? So then, if they have the same value, then why do we have both of them? Why two? Well, the answer to that is that you need improper fractions when you're writing, for example, mathematical formulae and uh, like, you know, mathematical statements and stuff. It's easier to uh, write down improper fractions and not get confused because mixed numbers can sometimes be confusing. So improper fractions are easy to use and easy to uh, operate upon as compared to mixed numbers. But when you're talking about things in day-to-day -day life, like, for example, if you're making a cake, and you say you need two and a half cups of sugar, you say two and a half cups of sugar. You don't say I need five upon two cups of sugar, right? Five upon two is improper fraction. It's the same as two and a half cups of sugar, but you know, you don't use uh, that in everyday or day to day life. You say five, uh, you say two and a half cups of sugar. So that's where, you know, mixed number has its usefulness. But both of them are important, and uh, that's why we should know about both of them, all right? So that's that about uh, the different types of fractions. Now how about you go and do some practice exercises because practice makes perfect. So go to www.homecampus.com.sg and find some worksheets and solve them. This is M signing off for now. Bye-bye.